Hey FlossTube, welcome to Creative One Studio. Happy Saturday, everyone. I hope you're doing well. I'm Teresa Koget, and this is my messy studio. <laughs> so um, this week was, oh, by the way, today is Saturday the 18th. That's right, because yesterday was St. Patty's Day. We do nothing for St. Patty's Day. I know a lot of people around this area, I mean, they make a day of it. They go to the bars at like 10 a.m. and just party all day. <laughs> I just, nope, I'd be asleep by noon. So this past week, uh, we well, last Saturday when I recorded, I was telling you that we were having our friends over. So everyone that I invited was able to come, and that's a rarity. So we had such a great time. We played Giant Jenga and we just had a really good time it was really great to catch up with everyone so we did that on saturday and then sunday we went to my mom's and jerry's house like we do every sunday and i made oh i made chicken noodle homemade chicken noodle soup it was so good and played card games and just hung out and uh, so it was a great weekend then what else oh gosh you know working on the taxes just my favorite thing on the planet to do <laughs> but I'm almost done. I will finish them up Monday. My part, Kevin's doing the other part of it, and hopefully he has it done Monday or Tuesday. So we'll get that to our accountant. And that is like a weight lifted off my shoulders. So happy about that. And I I revi revitalized or whatever, um, which Paint Wednesday. Now, I did that for so long and hardly ever missed a week. But... I took five months off <laughs> and I started that back up this past week so that felt good. I might as well show you what I worked on while I was doing Witch Paint Wednesday and it was just me. Kristen was in Florida. Anyways, I'm working on my bear calendar for 2025 so I got started on a cute little, cute little bear and it's going to say live a life as sweet as honey. I think it's so cute. I didn't get real far though because you know I'm chatting. <laughs> I'm chatting. It's a live video. So anyways, got to start on it. What else? Oh, then we had the kids on Thursday and I'm telling you guys the last two weeks we've had them. They have been angels like they're not fighting with one another. They're, you know, not writing on stuff they're not supposed to be writing on and you know what I mean? They're just they've been so good and we've just had such a blast with them. So fun. We picked them up and we actually took them out for lunch. And uh, that was, I love doing that. And I told them if they ate really good, they could have an ice cream. They could have dessert. And boy, Ellery doesn't forget anything. <laughs> but yeah, they both ate really well. So they had Superman ice cream. And Bobby's not really into sweets. You know, he took a couple bites and he really didn't want it. But it's surprising. I know, that just shocks me. So that was pretty much this week. I did stitch every morning. I listened to an audio book called The Things We Cannot Say by Kelly Rimmer. Wow, guys. This was... I had actually started listening to it quite a while ago and kind of forgot about it to be honest. And I went back and uh, I'm reaching for oh, our dreams. Stop. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get back to where it shows or I can read a little bit about it. But if you're into audiobooks, this one I'm telling you, it had me in tears at points, the points of this this book. It's so well written. And it goes from like current time to back in time. And it's cool because it's easy to uh, follow because they have different 
people reading the current one and then another person reads the you know back in time one so it's you don't get lost in the story anyways it's really really good i'll just read a short part of what it's about it says slipping between nazi occupied poland and the frenetic pace of modern life kelly rimmer creates an emotional and finely wrought narrative the things we cannot say is an unshakable reminder of the devastation when truth is silenced and how it can take a lifetime to find our voice before we learn to trust it before we learn to trust it geez such a good book such a good book all right we had a few questions i always say we who's this we maybe it's teeny teeny's here <laughs> Where did you get your shirt? So last week I had a shirt on and it said Mist West. M Mist West. It said Mid Midwest is the best, or something like that. And it had like all the Midwest states on it. I got that at Mouse House Tees in Amana, Iowa. Every time I go to the Farm Girl Gatherings, I go in there and I buy shirts. I love the designs on the shirts. I love that they have long sleeve t-shirts. I love the sayings. I mean, they're just, they have great stuff. And I love to support the town, you know, the community there. So <laughs> that's where I got that. And I looked and they don't have a website where you can order. I wish they did because I would love to see what they have at Christmas time. I'm there in the spring or I'm there in the fall. And around Christmas time, I would just, I would love to have some of their Christmas shirts. Can you recommend any videos for punch needle? Yes, I can. I actually have punch needle videos here on my YouTube channel. So go into my channel and then at the top, you'll see there's like a menu up there, not the very top, like under the main, you know, bar where it has my logo. Anyways, under there, there's some words. I can't remember home. I don't know. Playlist is one of them. So if you click on that, I have all different kinds of things on there, but uh, there's one that says punch needle and you can check it out. I want punch needle to grow. <laughs> I just love doing it so much. And it's like I said, it's a palette cleanser. I think I said that last week. It's quick, it's easy. You can knock something out in one or two days and then move back into your cross stitching. Just something to get done quick. And they're so cute, so cute. And I do have a punch needle tutorial where I go through everything. I can put a link to that as well in the description box. But really, you know, between the videos I have and if you just go to YouTube and type in, you know, punch needle embroidery tutorials or something like that, there's all kinds of information out there. Also, another person that did it was Vana. Vana Pfeiffer did a, an extensive punch needle uh like she did one one video a week and just went through the whole process of punch needle. So I forgot about that till just now. So I'm gonna write that down. I will link to Vanna's channel so you can check that out. Where can you buy wool yarn you showed? The, oh, the wool yarn I showed for that rug. So rug punching, that's another thing I wanna get more into because I have all the stuff, you guys. I have everything I need to do all the things I want to do. I just don't have the time. But I'm the, the rug or the wool that I showed last week. That was Kindred Spirits. I will link it below. Um, link. That is Allie Strebel. She, I don't know if I'm saying that right, Strebel or Strebel. But Kindred Spirit, she's been in the industry for a very long time doing hooked rugs and all kinds of textile arts and things like that. She does needle felting. So, or was that called wool felting? No, needle, needle felting. I have the needle, I have all the wool roving, I have all the stuff for that too, guys. <laughs> God, it's insane what I have here in the studio. But the reason I'm continuing to use, because I, well, let me back up. I'm using that wool because that's the wool I started with when I started that rug. And I want to continue, you know, using that wool to finish that rug. Moving forward, the next rug I do, I will be using Michelle's uh, Wild Hair Rug Studio. Michelle, 
her and I are working together because she is now tracing my rug patterns onto monks or linen. Right now, there's only a few of my rugs on my Etsy shop, but I worked on it today, figuring out pricing and everything. I sent the list to her, long as, you know, the prices still work because, you know, I don't know if the linen and the monks cloths have went up. So anyway, I plan on listing more rugs in my shop. And I want to make it so that you can buy everything that you need for a rug right in my Etsy shop. So what is hopefully going to happen is I will, like there is a method on how to figure out how much wool you need for a rug. So we're going to put the suggested, suggested amounts needed for each pattern. And I'm going to reference which colors I think would make the rug. Okay, now having said that, I'm going to show, pick, most of my rugs are from past punch needle designs or maybe even current punch needle designs. And I can tell you which wool colors will make it look like that punch needle, okay? And Michelle, she dyes the wool in her studio. And so she has everything that you would need to make a kit for yourself. Because I think that's the hard part. Like people that are just starting out especially don't know where to get all the, like where do I find the wool? And how much wool do I need? And there's all of these questions, unanswered questions. So I want to fine tune that and make it easier so that more people can get in into rug punching. And you can punch rugs with wool strips as well. Uh, wool strips is what is used for rug hooking. So rug hooking, the difference is you're working from the front of the rug and you're using a particular tool, a rug hooking hook to pull it, pull your loops up. Now you can hook with wool yarn, you can hook with wool strips and you work from the front. Rug punching is basically a large scale punch needle. So you're working from the back and you're using a tool and you're punching through. And the wool is being fed through that needle, just like with uh, punching with, you know, rug or with, ah, I knew I would do that, <laughs> with a uh, punch needle. You're using a smaller needle, you're using floss, you know, so it's a whole different thing, but it's, but it's the same. It's the same, but not. Does that make sense? It's just on a smaller scale and you're using floss instead of wool yarn. So that is my take right for now on rug punching. And I plan on talking more about it, showing more about it and teaching more about that here on this channel because it's just cool. <laughs> I love it. And I just want to share it with you guys. That's it for questions. All right, let's get into whips. So I worked on, I have a new start and it's in my super cute bag. I just love this. I love this so much. This is um, Tara, the 805 stitcher. I bought this from her on Etsy, but this is my friend, Janet Wecker Frisch. I just love, I love her sewing girls. They're so cute, I'll show you. I don't even know if this fabric's available anymore, but it's super cute. So in Patreon, we started a new sale and I'm stitching this on 40 count overcast by Cedar River Linens. And I have to tell you, Jody, that I absolutely, I don't even know if she watches my videos, but I have to tell you, I absolutely love stitching on your linen. So this is, um, if you're in my Patreon, this is for the tier four members and we're stitching. It's a mystery stitch along, so they have no idea what they're stitching until I release the next part. But this is part one. Well, it's part of part one. I don't think I have, and, oh, I do have the printout. Here is the printout on oh, Jeepers. So I have quite a bit done. We, I just 
we just started on the 15th. So it just started on Wednesday. Wait, Wednesday was the 15th? Yeah. Just started on Wednesday. And I feel like I have a really nice start there. Well, you know, I want to make these stitch-alongs so that you can keep up with them. I should say so that I can keep up with them. And I told them I don't want the stitch-along to be so much stitching that you don't have time to work on other things. So the parts are small. They'll be released on the 15th of every month. So it'll go, and there's six parts, so it will go till August 15th. The last part will drop. After I drop the last section, part six, uh, I'll leave it up for a week, and then I'm deleting all of the posts that have to do with that sale. And then I will get my finished piece framed, and then I will release it to the public. So that's how the stitch-alongs work. But if you're in Tier 4, then you get to stitch it kind of for free, because this is not something that was like this is something i dreamt up with strawberry manor so it's kind of a new thing that i'm doing anyway that's that and i have a finish you guys i have a finish yay i'm so excited somebody asked me they couldn't find this pattern in my etsy shop it's because it's not in my etsy shop yet it will be soon I was really hoping, I finished stitching it this, just this morning, and I was really hoping that I could have the pillow made before my video, and that just didn't happen. I wanted to work more on my, I don't want to, but I needed to work more on my taxes. This is part of my Faith in Stitches that I started, I think it was in 2020. Everything is possible for one who has faith. Mark, what is it? 923. So I will, I might go ahead and list this in Etsy anyways. It's just going to be a PDF download and then I can always change the picture out when I get it made into a pillow. But that is the plan is to make it into a little pillow. Oh yeah, this is stitched on 40 count uh, red cedar by Cedar River Linens. I, when I got my order from Jody, this fabric just like I was like, I don't care what, but I'm going to make something to stitch on that. I think that is one of the prettiest <laughs> fabrics I have ever seen. And I don't use a lot of color fabric. I'm not really into that. I like, you know, black, dark fabrics, um, but it's, you know, that and then the, the neutrals. But boy, this color is fantastic. So I will, I mean... Here's the deal. <laughs> I'll have a link in the description box below if I get this listed in Etsy before my video uploads. I, I think I'll be able to do that. That's if I remember. So I'm gonna I'm gonna write it down. Um Etsy list F I S, which is Faith and Stitches. So that's what I worked on stitching wise this week. That's all I had time to do. So I want to share a finish from one of my amazing whimsies. Denise Thornton. Oh my goodness. She finished Hey Friend. And she personalized the hair color to match her and her friend. This is a freebie that I gave away at the Nashville market to the shops that ordered from me. So, in order to get this, I'm asking that people don't post, even though it's free, I'm asking that people don't post it on social media. In order to get this pattern, you have to order from a shop that attended market. And I guess you, I don't know if they're giving it to everyone that orders or they're just giving it to people that order my stuff from them. I don't know how they're doing that. But anyways, that's how you can get your hands on that pattern. I think it's so stinking cute. And I think it's, even more cute stitched like everything else it's always more cute stitched when i just see it as a computer generated image it just doesn't do it all right i only have one thing for haul and it is something so stinking cute <laughs> karen from so much to love i'm in her bag of the month club 
Look at this adorable St. Patrick's fabric. And that lace, look how perfectly she stitched that. I mean, I would love to be able to sew that good. It's just adorable. And look at the inside. So very cute. And then I get the little floss. What is this called? Floss caddy? Floss something. Lucky, ch I don't know. I, I don't know what she calls these, but and I love that she has her little logo on there. And it's got a matching felt heart like is on the big one, but just smaller. So cute. So you put your floss in there for your project. I love it. And then she always includes stash tea, which this was very fitting. Super Irish breakfast. And then she gave us three skeins of DMC floss with black black and green awesome matches the bag she gave us a snag nevet I have one of these I've never used it I always forget what they're for <laughs> to be honest I can't remember oh if you have a snag in your fabric Insert the point into the center of the snag, push or pull tool completely through the fabric. Gently stretch fabric to realign the fibers. Handy dandy. And then we got a chart. Beth Seals of Summer House Stitch Works. Lucky Charm. How cute is that? Isn't that pretty? So that was nice. Oh, I got some, I've got some haul for you next week. I cannot wait. I ordered, well, I ordered, I ordered black swan 40 count linen by Fox and Rabbit. I ordered it from Teresa Vanat Kitten Stitcher. And then I ordered her, well, the heater's coming on, or the furnace is coming on. I'm just going to let it because it's kind of cold in here. And then I ordered her new book. She has a new book coming out, guys. Or it's actually been released and like I think it was 19 minutes after she sent the email I saw it and I ordered it and it just shipped today so I'm excited to share that with you guys oh and there was candy in our so much to love bag of the month club too let me throw those back in there all right that was my haul oh so I was looking I'll just show you the book I was looking for this book it says Punch Needle Rug Hooking Techniques and Designs by Amy Oxford. Now, Amy Oxford, she's the one that you get the, the Amy Oxford needles from, the punched needle for the rugs. Yeah. So she has a book, and I searched high and low for this book. I looked in this cabinet back here. Can you see that cabinet? I looked all through all those books. Most of those books in there are children's books because I have a a deep affection for children's books and the amazing stories and the amazing art and the imagination and oh, I just love all that anyways having said that I don't know if you watch my videos Debbie Bernheisel but I really miss when you would talk about <laughs> children's books I know you're retired from being a librarian now so that's why we don't get that lovely part of your floss tube anymore but I do miss it you enabled me so bad I ordered a lot of books because of you talking about those books anyways I was looking for this book I looked all through there I have some cupboards over in this other area that has books in it I looked in there I couldn't find it so I'm like well it's probably at the house because that's where my rug punching is at no nope, I gave up and then I was moving something and it's there's a little stack of books over here on this chair that I was painting for that um, charity auction dinner. Anyways, it was sitting there. I knew I, I knew it was here somewhere. <laughs> but in the interim, like while I was looking for that, I found some major treasures. I found some really cool books, like Americana folk art 
and just the history of the American flag books. I found some really cool books. So I dug those out and I want to look through those, peruse those maybe tomorrow after church. But while I was, like I said, I found some treasures and I wanted to share these treasures with you. The very beginning of my business was back in 1996. No, oh my gosh, 1994. <laughs> I said that because I just looked down and saw new releases, January 1996. 1994 is when we started Primitive Folk. Primitive Folk was basically my, the very first show I did, it was all hand-painted watercolors. They were all originals. They were like five by fives, five by sevens, eight by tens. I think I had a couple 16 by 20 and they were originals. Well, obviously I couldn't keep that pace up. So the next time I went six months later to the same show, I had prints made of my work. And we did, we had primitive folk, gosh, I want to say, so I started licensing my art in 1997. Actually, I had a couple licensees before that, but I got, I should say I signed with my agent in 1997 and that's when licensing really took off for me. But I had a couple license agreements before that that I just did on my own. One was the Vermont Cotton Company. What was the other one? I can't remember what the other one was. And <clears throat> Oh, I lost my train of thought completely right there. Okay, so what happened was a lot of, so, you know, we were, well, I had limited edition prints. We did everything by hand at our house. We bought the raw wooden frames, hand painted them, and Kevin ended up, you know, getting a sprayer and he would spray paint them, sand them, stain them. We, the only thing we didn't do was make our own prints. We had our, our the prints printed, but we framed them under glass and shipped. So that was the you know our business for several years. And when I got into licensing in 1997, and then Ryan was born in 1998, and then a, I don't know what is the last catalog I have here. This is 2005. So in 2005, we still, no, 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 no. I'm like, 2005, that doesn't even make sense. It wasn't 2005, <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so I'll talk about that in a minute. It was probably around the year, I'm gonna say 2000, probably when we, stopped primitive folk and just focused on licensing and the reason was because all not all but the majority of people that made prints started having their things printed over in china and even framed and just all of it done in china and it was so dirt cheap we just couldn't compete it was an era where i think the consumer just why would I pay that when I can get it for this? Not thinking, oh, well, this is made in the USA by a small company, and this is printed and, and published and framed and everything over in China. They weren't thinking about that. They're looking at the price, and that's it. So our, our business tanked, and I wasn't about to go have my things printed in China. I didn't know anything about it. I wasn't about to travel over there. So anyway, that was the demise of Primitive Folk. Well, thank goodness, you know, licensing was taking off. So I have, we started in 1994. I'd love to find, a, I'm so sorry if that made your dogs bark. I would like to find pamphlets in information, you know, from 1994. I don't know if I even had it, to be honest, because when I first started, I didn't have the money to make catalogs or anything like that so this could be the very first one so this is 1996 
And this was like a little handout that I had. So this is Take Time to Smell the Roses, my grandmother said to me. So that was on a 7 by 18 frame. Oh, no, this was on a board. Uh, it says, this piece of art is very special. You will find a label on the back of the board written in Teresa's handwriting, dedicating this piece to her grandmother. My, my grandma in Missouri said that to me one time. And I had this Angel series. This is Teddy Bear Angel. This is Feathered Angel. So, you know, these were limited edition. Limited 2,500 of that one. 5,000 of the angels. Let Love Rain. This was one of our top sellers. 16 by 16. And that was a limited edition of, of 5,000. So I, I had to sign all these cotton picking things. When we first started, I didn't do limited edition. We didn't bother with that but then that kind of seemed like the thing to do because I noticed a lot of other artists were doing that and um, so that's what we did then new releases January 1997 this was our logo isn't that cute it was a little sheep pulling a wagon I should chart that oh by the way Somebody asked me if I was going to chart my logo, and I'm going to because somebody at Nashville Market, I can't remember what shop it was, they asked me if I would do that because they want to hang that like by the display of my patterns, and they want to do that for other you know designers, so they were kind of going around asking the designers to do that, and I'm like, that's a really cool idea. So I am going to chart my current logo, but I think this would be really cute charted as well. I'm just showing you this because it's so nostalgic for me. So here is the big view of what we released January of 97. The show was in February and the other show was in June. So we went twice a year. So here are more angels. Bunny angel, feline angel. Oh, just two. I thought there was three there. And then the American heart. And then that one, along the picket fence, that was our number one. No, that was our number two seller. Our number one seller was the weather outside is frightful. And it was a row of snowmen. There's the heart and hand. It says friendship. This one says friendship and feelings of affection arise from the heart, guiding our hands in good works. And then we have these. And this, that flag was torn paper. That's how I made that one. Forget me not. And whoops. I thought there was another one. Oh, sorry. Birds. What is that one called? Baskets, bees, birds, and me. And then on the back, we had um, some box note cards that we did. We still have some of these note cards. So that was 97. This one doesn't have a date, but I'm going to guess it's 1998. So here's a little B-step painting. And all of these were watercolor prints. I mean, they were watercolor paintings made into prints. Basket Angel, Snow Buddy, Winter Greens, Mr. Felt, oh, he was popular. This guy here, he was a really good seller for us. Apples and Mums. Basket Angel. And then Yarrow, what is that one called? Yarrow Acres. 
and I don't remember what that name of that one is. Then we got into doing these little miniatures. These were what? Three by three and three by five frames. What is that? Oh, that's a little bear and a little sheep and a little bunny looking at the tree. Oh my goodness, it's so hard to do this. Okay. Oh, and then on the back, we did some Christmas cards, we did gift tags. We did some square note cards. So the top row there, those were some Christmas cards we did. And then those were gift tags or gift. They were actually cards. They were just small. Then we had a set of four square note cards. This was one of my favorites, Herbal Whiskers. And then I love these notepads. Can I just tell you about these notepads? <laughs> okay, so we had the printer, they printed the notepads. And they put the chipboard in between like, I wanna say there was maybe 50 sheets to a pad. I can't remember, does it say? No, it doesn't say. So we glued them ourselves. So we would line them up. It was just so silly. We would line them up and then um Oh, I like her. Bees for the garden. She's cute. Oh. So we would have these stacks like this high of the paper with the chipboard in between. And we'd set something really heavy on it so it wouldn't move. And then we had this glue. And Jan, my best friend, she would paint that glue on the back of them. And we'd have to let it dry. And then take a knife and cut where the chipboard was to make the pads. I mean, we were so old school, you guys. We did everything by hand. It was just nuts. Then I got into rubber stamps. Oh my goodness gracious. Look at, we even had, we even offered a display rack for the note cards in the, um, in the notepads. Isn't that, this is crazy. I kind of forgot we did that actually. And then here are here are our uh, rubber our rubber stamp catalog. I mean it's hysterical. Oh well, that one was printed wrong. Just basically taking the art out and you know taking the line drawing and making them into rubber stamps. Isn't that cow. Anyway, I just thought that was fun. I thought you might enjoy seeing some whims of the past. I mean, we're talking like, wow, a <laughs> very long time ago. So when I stumbled on that, I was like, oh, I got to share that with them. It's just, it's fun to, to think back on all of the, all of the uh, craziness, I suppose you could say. Okay. So this week we're gonna have a sale. I totally forgot about that, announcing that last week. This week we're gonna have 20% off in our Etsy shop on Thoughts and Dreams. So there are three, I don't think I did this one already. I might've already put this one on sale. If I did, sorry. 
but it's on sale again. <laughs> Shoot. I thought the last one I did was flurry. I can't remember. Oh, well. So here's thoughts and dreams. Here's the three designs that you get. If you purchase that. And then I said, well, why am I only doing cross stitch when I say I want to promote punch needle more, right? So celebrate punch needle book is going to be 20% off as well. This has 15. We were celebrating 15 years in the needlework business. And we did celebrate the cross stitch book. And then the next year I did celebrate punch needle and there's no color pictures in here. This was before I did color pictures, but a lot of them can be seen. If you go to the Etsy shop and you look, you can see a lot of them have been punched by other people and they have shared it with me. So I put it in there so you can see. So yeah, 20% off both of these books. All right. All we have left is the giveaway. So we're going to give away this cute little needle minder, which is just adorable. Look at that bunny. So cute. So the winner of that is Susan Beaver. So congratulations, Susan. If you could please email me at TeresaCogut3 at gmail.com and just put needle minder winner or something like that in the subject line so I can see that and I'll get that mailed out as soon as I hear from you. This week, oh, one thing. I forgot to show you guys this last week. My soul sister, Kristen, got this for me, and it's the cutest thing ever. She said, I think because she was saying to her daughter or something, she's the cheese to my cracker. And then she saw that at the store, and she's like, I had to buy it for you. Look how cute, and it just sits there. So I have it on display here at my studio. We had it on display at the show, too, but nobody mentioned it. Anyways. Um... So yeah, thank you, Kristen. You're the cheese to my cracker as well. So, oh, with this, when I said, oh, you know, 2005, I'm like, there's no way we had primitive folk in 2005. We didn't. These are just pictures of my artwork. This was when I was into art licensing. And uh, this is what I printed off and took to like the Atlanta gift show and stuff like that to talk to people about licensing my art. So that was what that was all about. This week's giveaway is going to be nature. I'm giving away one of my nature books. So to be in on that drawing, you just have to use the word nature and then remember me. If you want to be in on that drawing, please just put in remember me or just remember. You can make it into sentence. You can do however you want. Just don't say the keywords. You guys know what words you're not supposed to say. Everyone talks about it in every video. and I don't want to be so redundant, but you know you're not supposed to say giveaway. Don't say those keywords because I'll have to delete your comment because that's how we get spam and trolls and all that kind of stuff in our in our um, YouTube channel. So that's it, guys. That's it for this week. Thank you for joining me. I know everyone is so busy. And so the fact that you take time out of your day to spend it with me, I appreciate it. And uh, I guess that's it. I feel like I'm missing something that went really fast. Don't forget, create every day. Bye.